Hello, my name's Daydreamer Dan, and the Lynels are too sexy. Ever since its release back in 2017, Legend of Zelda The Breath of the Wild has received almost universal praise from both critics and fans alike. After a hundred years of healing in a magical kiddie pool, Link has finally woken up and is ready to save Hyrule from the ever-growing power that is Ganon. And while I'm only a few hours in myself, I've seen enough YouTube shorts to know that he does this by apparently cooking a lot, f***ing around with a Gen 1 iPad, and pulling off that Gerudo outfit way better than he ever should have. However, despite all the amazing changes Changes that were brought into this game, there is one muscular lion elephant in the room that really stood out amongst all of them. The Lionels, specifically the completely not safe for YouTube comments that I first heard when I looked up a photo of one of these creatures. Everyone was finding these titanic creatures sexy, and I know that sometimes during my videos people think that I over exaggerate some of my claims, which is completely fair. Uh, lying on the internet is a lot of fun. However, when I say everyone in this case, you know, the Lynels are kind of sexy. I agree. There's already on about them, if you're wondering. I think the Lynels are kind of hot. Is that okay? They've got nice abs. I believe Tor to be amazing and hot. Look at the sheer mass of that body. It could be great to cuddle to. <laughs> And with the release of the sequel, Tears of the Kingdom, coming out in just a few days, I was really excited to see what the Legend of Zelda franchise would be bringing in their newest installment. Oh, they made him sexier somehow. Neat. So with Legend of Zelda content being so Lionel Richie, I wanted to dive deep into the Lionels. Wait, not like that. Wait, not like that. I wanted to dive deep into the history of Lionels in the Legend of Zelda series and then tackle on the subject of why we find them so sexy in Breath of the Wild when compared to their previous iterations. So, before we look at the big hunk of horse line meat that is the Lynels in Breath of the Wild, let's go back in time and look at the Lynels over the years. A time Lynel, if you will. Even if you're a huge Legend of Zelda fan, colloquially known as a Laws Head, you may not even realize that Lynels were in the very first game, all the way back in 1986. That's because their original sprite art is nothing like the models that appear in Breath of the Wild. Coming in red and blue, these creatures look a lot more similar to their original myth mythological inspirations, the centaur, than the not-so-little line man that appears on the Switch. The official drawn game art, although obviously half man, half line, is not even half as ripped as the modern iteration. The Breath of the Wild version looks like he could easily be a Mortal Kombat character, while the NES version looks like a blueberry-flavored LARPer. Having these two next to each other literally reminds me of the Virgin Chad meme. While I do enjoy dunking on the blue Lionel, we get a look at the two main traits of what makes a Lionel a Lionel when we read the Legend of Zelda manual description of these characters. The guardian who attacks all those who come near Death Mountain. Watch out, he's pretty strong, and Link's little shield can't stop his sword. From this, we learn that 1. Lionels are guardians that are willing to put everything on the line in order to protect what they are tasked to stand for. And 2. That they're pretty f***ing strong. Six years later, we have the second appearance of the Lynels in Link to the Past. This time around, they actually look a little bit more Lion, a little less Mr. Tumness in their appearance. However, there are only three red Lynels, completely dropping the blue ones like Elon dropped the legacy blue checkmark on Twitter. Hi, this is Editing Dan. Uh, apparently, Elon is bringing back the checkmark, so that joke's not funny anymore hate Twitter. This leads to a new trait that we must consider post-Link to the Past. The Lynels are rare to find enemies, and they're often high-leveled. We already see how Lynels are starting to shape out to what they look like in their modern representations, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, yeah, sure, they're a little bit weaker, taking only about four to six hits in order to defeat, but that's still much stronger than the rest of the rogues gallery from Legend of Zelda. I'm sure the Lynels in Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons aren't gonna throw a wrench or anything into our definition so far. <laughs> What the f is a fire cat? While the game's Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons released in 2001 didn't really bring anything new to the definition of what a Lionel is, there was one piece of Oracle lore that really threw a curveball into my definition. In Oracle of Seasons by Craig Wessel, a scholastic choose-your-own-adventure book based on the game with the same name, the book states that before Link could enter Onox Castle, he had to get by two fire cats guarding the entrance. This is the first and only 
only time that Lynels are ever referred to as fire cats, but it does kind of make sense. Lynels are seen breathing fire in Link to the Past, shooting fire arrows in the Oracle games, and although not as obvious, the original Lynels seem to shoot some sort of beam projectile that, while a bit more ambiguous, cannot be blocked by Link's wooden shield, but is blocked by his magical shield. And from what I learned from Pokemon, fire beats grass. See, Mom, I told you that this would be important for me to know one day. So a bit reluctantly, we're going to add one more trait. Uh, Lynels are fire cats. <laughs> that was so cringe. Shit. Outside of the WC, the Wessel Cannon, there's not much official artwork that was released for Oracle of Ages that showed these creatures. And as far as I can tell, the sprites are much more similar to the original games rather than the Link to the Past ones. We then have a huge drought of Lionel content until A Link Between Worlds, which came out in 2013, nearly 12 years after their last appearance in Oracle. The jump from sprites on a Game Boy to actual rendered 3D models on a 3DS definitely gave these bad boys the glow up that they deserved. And you can actually tell a little bit more that they are in fact lions rather than I don't know, maybe like a wolf. With these 3D models though, we do see something weird that we've never seen before. Uh, it looks like that the Lynels are wearing a green tank top of some sort. Much like the dad who continues to wear his shirt at the public pool, he seems to be a little shy and nervous about showing his torso to the hero of time now that they have this new 3D body of theirs. And I get it, after a long break from the public eye, the Lynels are just scared of being judged for their new triple Ds. He's made up of polygons now. Now, not pixels, and him showing up at all is a huge first step for our furry little four-legged friend. So because of this, we're going to add one more tenant. The Lionels are self-conscious. There is one more game appearance of the Lionels, uh, but that's from Cadence of Hyrule, and the reason why I'm not going to be including them is because- Oh my god! Oh my god, get that thing off my screen. Why does it look like an AI-generated Pokemon? And with that, those are all the video game appearances of the Lionels pre-Breath of the Wild. However, there are two other non-video game appearances that I wanted to talk about today. The first is the TV version of the Lionels from the 1989 Legend of Zelda cartoon episode. Sing for the Unicorn. While they're clearly supposed to be Lionels with their horse-like legs and their color schemes matching those of the original NES games, we can just see that they're just normal men. We see that the character designers of the show didn't really consider any of the lion-like qualities of the Lionel. I mean, they didn't even match the official dork-ass design of the Lionels from the NES art. Although, we do get the answer of the age-old question of if a Lionel would wear a skirt like this or like this. The answer is apparently both. However, I will give it to the character designers for including one detail, which is their armor. Uh, sure, they could be wearing it in order to protect themselves from Link's Master Sword, but from how quickly we see them get defeated, it's obvious that they're wearing this because they want to hide their washboard abs that they're still nervous to show off. So far, there has been no piece of Legend of Zelda media that has shown the Lynels as extremely hunky individuals who are part horse, part lion, and part chad. However, this would all change in 1990 when The Legend of Zelda comics, released by Valiant Comics, came out with their fifth edition with a story called Day of the Triforce. In this story, we see the Lynels, alongside with the other minions of Ganon, attack the water town of Saria. However, who gives a shit about the plot when we see this extremely sexy beast man? These, my friends, are the obvious blueprint. Despite having a more lion-like head, the obviously human torso is bulging with muscles, with abdominals that lead down to the V that turn into more abs? Horse abs, maybe? Regardless, out of all of the Lynels that we've talked about so far in this video, this is the only one in over 15 years of Legend of Zelda content that is arguably sexy. Which finally leads us to Breath of the Wild, which was released actually only four years after Link Between Worlds. And if the Between Worlds Lynels were the awkward middle stage evolution, the Breath of the Wild Lynels are definitely the final pseudo-legendary form that there's going to be a lot of Rule 34 about. But honestly, can you blame them? The muscle definition covers every inch of their body, from the shoulders to the pecs to the upper abs and the lower abs. And when I say upper and lower, I obviously mean the upper humanoid torso and the lower horsenoid torso. The scars and bandages give off the aura of a battered combatant, uh, someone who's broken, and I can fix him. 
I swear I can fix him. And not only did they give them Jason Momoa hair, but they give him body hair as well. The definition of a loincloth, according to Wikipedia, is a one-piece garment that covers the genitals and sometimes the buttocks. While we can see that the loincloth is obviously not covering the Lionel's buttocks, we do see that there might be a reason why it's hanging from there. So, with the addition of Breath of the Wild, we can finally add our final trait of what makes a Lionel a Lionel. Lionels are physically attractive. With the Breath of the Wild Lionel, or as I like to refer to him as, our Lionel fantasy, it's obvious that he is a hunk and a half. The half being a horse. However, for the remainder of the video, I wanted to talk about the psychological reasons of why we find the Lionel sexy. Wanting to make sure that my psychology degree didn't go to waste, I decided to open up Google Scholar and start to learn more about the Lionel's mythological equivalent, the centaur. Coming from Greek mythology, the centaur, with the torso of a human and the body of a horse, much like most other Greek mythological creatures, came from the Greek gods wanting to get their nut off. If you want the full story, you can go ahead and Google it, because... <laughs> However, what is more important than the origins of the centaur is the interpretations of what the centaurs meant metaphorically. For instance, some scholars believe that the centaur is meant to symbolize the meeting of human-like qualities, like reason, with the unpredictability and, and I quote, sexual potency of a horse. What the fuck is wrong with scholars? Another less perverted interpretation is the horse and rider hypothesis, which believes that the two parts of the centaur are meant to act as a dynamic partnership rather than the clashing of two different beings, with the horse bringing tolerance and patience and the rider bringing control and balance. And while these theories were meant to help us understand the origins of the centaur, we can also use them to help us understand why we, as humans, may potentially find centaurs and lionels to an extent sexy. I mean, even during my research, I found out that centaur romantic erotica existed. Like this one, rescued and ravaged by the centaur. Holy shit, that's a wild name. By looking at the meeting of horse and man hypothesis, we obviously see the sexual potency of a horse. The centaur is supposed to be like the bad boy that you just can't tame. Meanwhile, the horse and rider hypothesis reflect the long-term hashtag relationship goals that we're all looking for, where two individual beings can come together as one in harmony. And while the Lionel does add the head of a lion, according to BibleTools.org, the lion can be a metaphor for strength, ferocity, majesty, and leadership. And the Bible can't lie to you, that would be entrapment. Much like humans, lions are seen as unified beings and further accentuate the juxtaposition between them and the chaotic nature of a bucking horse. And with this newfound knowledge of understanding the sexiness of the Breath of the Wild Lionels, we can now understand why the character designers decided to bring this character to their final Lionel form. Breath of the Wild itself is a metaphor for balance. From the regression of of Hyrule to a medieval state after the loss of the advanced Sheikah tribe, to the awakening of an ancient warrior with little knowledge who is meant to bring order and peace to all. Hell, even the concept of the Triforce being power, wisdom, and courage obviously is meant to remind players of the Plato allegory of the heavenly chariot, which is meant to reflect the triparted state of the human soul that balances the drive for knowledge, the want for power, and the hope for honor. Obviously. The Lionel is a perfect metaphor for Breath of the Wild, a game that brought new life into a series that people already beloved. Very few of the other returning enemies were made attractive. I mean, come on, would you say that you want a bone whiz robe? Sure, he has a good personality, but besides that. And the same applies to Tears of the Kingdom. We're not going to be considering Ganon, but let's just face it, being voiced by Matthew Mercer means that your character is instantly sexy. The Lionel, with its metaphorical marriage of something familiar and something primal, has returned after a long hiatus, making us fall in love with not only the new direction of the game, but also with the 12 pack that he's rocking after stripping away that green tank top. And with that, Breath of the Wild is the perfect game for Link to finally face the Lionel. Perfect game. Except for one thing. You might remember the five distinct traits that I brought up that makes a Lionel a Lionel. However, 
I can't hide from you all that the Lynels and Breath of the Wild don't actually meet all five of these traits. They are strong, there's no question about that, and they are pretty rare, with only about 20-ish spawning on the entirety of the map. They are also obviously fire cats because they can breathe fire from their mouth, and they are self-conscious. This is because whenever Link gets too close to a Lynel, he'll actually stare him down first before attempting to begin an assault. I get it, social anxiety sucks, Lynel. No one's judging you. However, while they are able to meet the four ladder traits on that list, they don't meet the first one, where they're meant to put everything on the line to protect what they were tasked to guard. The Lynels in Breath of the Wild are barely guardians, and of all of the games and appearances that we brought up, none of them meet all five criteria. Especially not this one. Most of the game appearances don't emphasize the sexiness of the Lynels, uh, the television appearance doesn't even make them cats, and the comic appearance makes them more soldiers rather than guardians. The fact that no piece of Legend of Zelda media, not even Breath of the Wild, has met all five criteria is honestly heartbreaking. The Lynel, despite its status as a powerful enemy, has never gotten the true respect that it deserves from its franchise. And while Tears of the Kingdom is not out yet, I don't want to be disappointed by subpar Lionel representation once again. Nintendo has never made a game that has truly shown what makes a Lionel a Lionel. But maybe that's because it's impossible. What gaming genre out there can show off their protective nature, their physicality, their unique personalities, fiery attitude, their sensitivity, and of course their sexiness? Wait a second. A Lionel dating simulator. This is the only way that we can show respect to the Lionels. Get close enough with the Lionels in order to have them drop their guard and show them why they have that fire within them. Learn the individual personalities of a small group of outsiders who are more than just their brute strength. This is the perfect Legend of Zelda game, and I believe that the creators Shigeru Miyamoto and Takeshi Tezuka should reach out to me so that we can make this a reality. I am willing to just take royalties, because at the end of the day, the Lynels are too sexy. But maybe we should take advantage of that. So go out there, find these majestic creatures, and take them on for their loot, or for their love. Because you know that I will.